Today's vlog day is 771. I thought today we'd talk, so we're doing emergency ships Monday this morning, right? I figured we could talk about ship showers and how they've kind of affected the way that I shower and probably will shower for the rest of my life. Thank you, emergency ships, for that. But yeah, we're also running late to meet with Kate this morning, so we should probably, yeah, just leave. One of the great ironies of nautical life, of course, is the lack of water. There's never enough water to go around. Well, <laughs> thankfully there is actually enough water to go around, but not for all the purposes that you might think. And the reason it's ironic, of course, is because you're surrounded by water. You're actually, like, you're, the, whole, the whole idea is that you're sitting on a limitless supply of water. But the problem is it's not drinkable. If you, have, if you haven't been paying attention, you can't drink the ocean. Don't try to drink ocean water. It won't go well. And so that limited supply of water, fresh water, that you can carry with you on your boat, uh, has to go to particular purposes, first and foremost, like a drinking. And if you can't a drink of the water, you're gonna go a thirsty, and thirsty's not good. Now, before you think I'm gonna get all super dramatic on you, I'm, I'm not, don't worry. Oh, that metro, my, my metro was here. I totally thought that that was just the other metro. It's not like we were taking saltwater showers, like bucket showers on deck or something like that. Not, not that intense. Although, there were moments where we came close, and I can tell you about that. But what it was, we had like real, regular, you know, upright, human adult showers. Wait for this man just to stop. The reason we call them, that's still really loud echoing down through that tunnel. The reason we called them ship showers in the end was because we only had two minutes to take them. Uh, between, you know, somewhere around 400 people and a limited supply of water on board the ship, you could only ever, you know, you couldn't really rely on people not to waste ridiculous amounts of water on their showers. You can go through a lot of water really quickly, so we only had two minutes to shower. Especially because we didn't have desalination units, so we couldn't produce our own fresh water. Now, you might be asking, where did we get the water to begin with? <laughs> That's a great question, actually. You're being very perceptive this morning, if that's what you're asking. The water actually comes from whatever country you're sitting in. They pipe it in, right? So whatever country you go to, they run uh, fresh water through the port into your ship, and that works really well in a lot of ports around the world. Most ports around the world probably get, you know, a steady stream of fresh water. It fills you up, keeps you from running short at any point. You use it how you want. We weren't really hanging out in countries that had, you know, always the most reliable infrastructure, and so that can lead to problems. If you don't have water, you know, as a human, you have problems. So it's about conservation of water in the end because he needed to drink, like I said, but we were also running a hospital. And water is kind of important for maintaining, you know, operations and keeping things going, keeping things clean. So showers, thankfully, were available and we took them and they're wonderful. But you only had two minutes. And the way you take a ship shower, is you wet yourself down, you just kind of get wet, and then you turn off the water, soap, do all your soap and sudsing, and then you rinse yourself off, and that's it. Not nearly as wonderful or luxurious as the extra long showers you might be used to taking, and it took me months, maybe even a year. I don't remember how long it took. It could have been longer than that before I would take a shower in any other way, because it just kind of had it beaten into me. And for a long time, that's, that's just how I did it. I'd wet myself down, turn off the water, Soap, rinse, and be done. It's tragic. Actually, the first time that I took a shower on vacation here in Paris from Mercy Ships, I, I couldn't bring myself to do anything else. I was like, I tried. I was looking forward to longer showers, and I couldn't make myself do it. And that was, that was kind of depressing. Here we are, though. <laughs> Meetings, good work. I'm all the way to Versailles. I got through all the Iranis months before my computer died. I started on Versailles, getting very close to finishing this thing. You know, tips for, you know, where to go in the market, but also stuff outside of the bike tour. In case you find yourself in Versailles wandering around, there is a really good coffee shop out there, a couple handy things like that. So now I need to find food for myself and then feed the cocoa. It's like three o'clock. Probably should have had lunch like two hours ago or something, but you know, I just wanted to, I just want to get this thing done. It's a lot of work. It's an, it's a surprising amount of work actually to get all this done, but um, it's really, I think it's really good. So uh, water stories with the ship. For, I was telling you that you have to get water pumped in whatever country you're in and that doesn't always work. And one of the classic examples of that was actually when we were in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Things went kind of poorly because the water supply was very uncertain and actually there was a point at which we almost had to leave the country. Like we were almost forced to leave. They didn't tell most of the crew this, but we were almost forced to leave because we didn't have enough water to continue going. We were running low on our tanks and so we actually got to the point where we were rationing water and weren't even allowed to shower for a little while. And it's, it's worse than that because the circumstances around it are bad. 
very quick taco lunch. I'm gonna go check on Coco the cat. Probably actually work in the apartment for a little bit because they have the opportunity to sit and work there for a bit and keep her company for a little bit longer than usual so she can come snuggle with me while I work or something like that. Or ignore me. Cats love to ignore people too, so she not, doesn't have the opportunity to ignore anybody right now. Might as well provide that as we go. Water situation. The whole story goes like this. We're in Sierra Leone. We're playing volleyball. I think we were playing in a tournament actually with like another NGO or something like that. I can't remember who it was. Maybe some Peace Corps kids, something. And we went to play on a beach that was famous because uh, up until a couple of years before it had been used to dump medical supplies. So this is the beach on the water near Aberdeen, I think. That was kind of notoriously filthy. We went, we played beach volleyball, had a great time, sweaty, gross, playing in the sand, not exactly the cleanest sand in the world for a number of reasons. And we're done, we're heading back, we stopped for lunch. We were joking about it because we knew the water was tight. We are like, oh, it's gonna be our luck that by the time we get back, they're gonna be like water restrictions and won't be allowed to shower anymore. The debate was on the way back, should we go straight back, get showered, you know, because we're pretty nasty, or stop and have lunch? And stopping and having lunch has, you know, ramifications when you're in Freetown because it takes a really, really long time to get through traffic. And we are like, you know what, let's stop, have lunch, should be good. Whether or not this would have actually affected our chances of getting a shower or not is kind of, you know, up for debate. But in the middle of this lunch, which took forever to get, it takes a couple extra, it can take hours to get food, depending on where you are. Somebody got a text message that was like, water restrictions, no showers allowed on the ship. And we were just like, what? We're filthy, we're disgusting, we're absolutely covered in just nastiness. And so the discussion came down, we were like, should we get a hotel just so we can shower? like take turns showering before we go back to the ship. Didn't know what to do. Eventually we didn't. And we, the, thankfully the water restrictions only lasted a few days. But the trick that we used was there are water dealers, like people that were actually selling water on the street. Not bottled though, in bags. So we bought bag water and took bag water showers for, you know, the next couple of days. They were cheap. Just like literally take a, a, po a pouch of water, cut off the corner and use that to shower down. Though that was not fun. Sierra Leone was rough for a number of reasons, but that was definitely one of the kickers. So, it teaches you to appreciate the two minutes of ship shower that you get when all you have instead is a bag shower. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be worse than a bag shower, but I'd be happy not to have any of those anytime soon. Again. So you can see why, like, I might have an issue after three years of dealing with water shortages. Maybe, maybe I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with my showering. One of the other things that I do besides take shorter showers, I don't take like two minute showers. I do shower like for a few minutes longer, but still pretty short. Uh, one of the other things that I do is that because on the ship, it was actually really like the circulation wasn't always the best depending on the circumstances, like if the air conditioning went out or something like that. You didn't want your towel to be that wet because it might take a while to dry, at least I didn't. I didn't want it to start smelling funny or anything like that. So I'd actually squeegee off like everything I could in the shower before drying down with the towel and putting that on the rack. So I still do that. I still squeegee as much as I can off in the shower and like cool down before I actually towel off. Just trying to keep the water as contained and uh, you know down the drain as possible. Where are you going, Kikat? Floofers is still doing just fine if you were worried about her, so. Although now she's too good for me. We'll see how long that lasts. Anyways, that's a little bit about my experience showering on a ship in West Africa. If you're curious about Mercy Ships at all, uh, I've got a whole playlist of Mercy Ships Monday playlist that I've started. I don't know if I've shared it. I'll make sure to share that though in case I haven't. And if you want to kind of hear some stories about all the countries that I've been to, places I've been, I'll try to continue to build up on those as time goes. But that is the Mercy Ships Monday for you this week. I'm going to get back to work on the guide. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life, it feels like. But hopefully it'll be done in the next couple of days. Out in the wild, it's looking and feeling pretty good. I've been hunting down more photos to put into it. Ace, and I will have that available for you ASAP. Of course, as soon as it goes available, I'll announce it here. You won't have to wait. You won't have to know. She's literally just lying, like, just a step over here. Hold on. Let's see if I can convince her to come back. Don't you want more scritches? Don't you want some more scritches? She's, she's being a cat. Anyways, I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for more of this nonsense, a little bit more of this nonsense as well. And uh, yeah, see, just doing her cat thing. <laughs> she literally just rubbed her tooth on my fingernail. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for more whatever is to come, kitty cats or not. Oh man, look at that, now I'm covered in cat hair. Who would have thought that would happen?